my name is Amy. I'm a volunteer with the Portland League of Women Voters. We are here today filming the Video Voters Guide. With me today is Tammy Telestis Arnold. She is Senate District 25 candidate. We're going to be asking her some questions. So let's start with your background and what led you to run for this office. Well, thank you, Amy. Um, I am a registered nurse, a pediatric nurse of uh, 18 years. Um, I've got three kids of my own that are all school-aged and a mom, um, wife of 25 years. Um, you know, I've been very involved in our community for a really long time. Um, you know, it started out when my kids were young as being the PTA mom and always wanting to find a way to get involved and try and make things a little bit better, whether it was for my kids or as I progressed on to make it better for my community. And I feel like I've done that and it's been rewarding. I currently serve as the, um, on the Mount Hood Community College Board of Education. Um, it gives me great pride to try and make our educational system a little bit better for our community. Um, I'm also a Fairview City Council with the City of Fairview, and I also am on the board of ed, uh, excuse me, the board for our local Chamber of Commerce, the West Columbia Gorge Chamber. Great, thank you. So let's jump right into Measure 97. There, if it does not pass, there's a predicted budget shortfall, and we want to ask the candidates about how they plan to fund areas of social services, education, and also issues of homelessness and affordable housing. I think we all recognize um, that we can do better with what we have. Um, I am not in support of Measure 97. I think it will do a lot of damage to Oregon. One of my biggest concerns is job loss. It would be one of the largest tax hikes in the state of Oregon um, that we've ever seen and across the nation. That's really worrisome to me and the type of message it sends to businesses when we're trying to attract businesses, not push them away from our community. Um, you know, we've had a lot of red tape in our community, in, in the state legislature that's made it difficult for businesses to thrive and succeed. And if we want to have a thriving community, we need strong business, we need jobs. Um, how do we go about funding? Well, first off, it has to do with prioritization. What is it that's important to Oregon? And I can tell you as a mom with children and living in East County for as long as I have, one of my biggest worries is our educational system. Particularly in East County, we are doing a disservice to our children. At Reynolds High School, we're only graduating 64% mm. of, our, of our children. That's worrisome to me. I, I can't imagine what our community is gonna look like in five, 10, or 15 years when we have such a low graduation rate. I think it's more pronounced here in East Multnomah County than it is in other sections of the state. I, a lot of it has to do, like with what I said a, a little earlier, has to do with priorities. Right now, um, education is not a priority in the state of Oregon. Um, it only uses 7% of our overall budget, where we're seeing our budget increase every single year, but yet the amount to education has actually decreased. This has created an issue for us and, and like I said, I'm, uh, it's important to me to fund education. I think education is the backbone to a good thriving economy. Um, we have to have our kids working within the system and, and giving back eventually when they get through high school. Thank you. Let's talk briefly about gun safety. We just want to hear some comments regarding this issue in Oregon. Um, it hits really close to home, especially here in East County because of what happened in uh, Reynolds High School. Um, I don't ever want to see anything like that ever happen again. Um, so when we talk about priorities, I mentioned that education is a priority of mine, but also as a registered nurse and taking care of people, um, I recognize that we have a significant problem in not only East County, but in the state, and that is, is how we take care of people with mental health issues, and I think that we recognize um, that a lot of what's happened with these uh, mass massacres is it boils down to mental health issues. We need to be able to help people that have mental health issues. And right now, we have them living in the streets, living in boxes, and they're not getting the care that they need. And I feel that we not only should, but we can do a better job of taking care of, of our homeless and our mentally um, unstable 
um, folks in our community. Mm -hmm. So let's switch gears a little bit and talk about transportation. How do you plan to fund the overall infrastructure for our transportation and ensure that we are doing the best to prioritize those needs? Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways to fund transportation. I don't think that um, that there's anybody that disputes in the state of Oregon that we have a really big issue and that we should have had a transportation package pass this last legislative session, le legislative session, which has been been worrisome. We see it here, especially in East Multnomah County, again, um, with regard to our failing road infrastructure. Um, our agriculturals have to get their food to market. Um, it affords not having good infrastructure um, decreases our quality of life. Um, I have to commute to Clackamas on a daily basis and I was my husband and I were just having a conversation the other day it's like we used to be able to get to Clackamas to and from 20 minutes it was easy mm -hmm. it's not like that anymore you know to get to and from Clackamas it takes you a good 45 minutes to an hour mm -hmm. that's time that I could be home spent home with my family and my children because that's where I want to be and I and I know that a lot of other people want to spend a lot less time on freeways and they want to be home with their families too so when it comes to funding and fixing this problem I don't it's going to be a top priority in this next session um, there's you know a lot of different avenues to do that there's talk of a potential um, increase in gas tax um, you know there's talk about distributing that um, taxation not only amongst people that drive in vehicles but all modalities of transportation so you know we look at um, you know potentially max riders and we look at folks that are bicycling um, I think it's fair I'm I'm very big on making sure that if we are going to tax it that it's equal that's not um, just geared towards uh, one sect okay, thanks so we have just a little bit of time left. I do want to touch a little bit more on affordable housing. Mm -hmm. Can you share some comments on where you see our abilities to fund those needs? You know, um, we do have uh, an issue with uh, affordable housing across the state. It's not just limited to East County, although it feels very pronounced here in our community. Um, you know, a couple thoughts that I had with regard to um, affordable housing. One was when we get to a point where we have a vacancy rate that is so low that people are, are literally outbidding each other to try and, and mm -hmm. find a place to live, then I think we need to look at our urban growth boundary and w declare a state of emergency. Let's say when we get below 6%, um, then we look at is it possible to expand this in certain areas so that we can have more buildable land. Part of the problem is that our land is so expensive to build on um, that it, it's it's hard to incentivize builders to not want to get top dollar for that land when they're paying top dollar. Mm -hmm. So um, mandates and um, incentivizing the building of more affordable housing is important. I think also the way that we look at um, the types of regulations that are around housing, I think that we could actually become, um, I would be in favor of looking at other options. So um, accessory um, dwelling units, making it less um, uh, making it less restrictive and easier for homeowners to let's say convert a garage into a home and, and or a place to live and rent that out to folks. Um, uh, more mixed-use housing, more um, mixed communities with different varying incomes. I think all of those things will help towards creating more affordable housing in, 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 our, in our state. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Again, this is Amy, a volunteer with the Portland League of Women Voters. We encourage you to vote for the general election. At, and the last day to register to vote is October 18th. Election is November 8th. Thank you. Thank you.